So, I mean, um, I wanted to talk about like building Christian community because we have Protestants and Catholics who are watching and we yeah. live in a, I don't know, it feels like an anti-Christian nation. Can we really call it even post-Christian? I think, aren't we one step further when mm -hmm. we're butchering ourselves and fashioning things that appear to be penises yeah. and saying that they are them when yeah. we're killing children, when we don't know what marriage is, we don't know what a woman is. Yep. Uh, I don't know, man. Just it feels like an anti-Christian nation. Is that too pessimistic? I don't think it's pessimistic. I mean, when you had, uh, you know, Chesterton saying that America was the only nation with the heart of a church because we had these creedal affirmations rather than a tradition, a history, yes, a race, yeah. you know, you know, and even like a kind of a language in, in, in certain parts, right? That's interesting, um, especially you know, with influences of, of French coming down and you know, a bit of Spanish coming up and whatever and. Uh, and, and I think right then, once we have two creeds, it's hard to hold both, you know, right in, in and of themselves. I don't know how you feel yeah. about this, but I, I find it really weird that Americans put their hand over their heart and salute a flag and sing. Yeah. I mean, to be honest. I, I, I want to learn from my American friends, because believe me, I think the like American creed is way better than where Australia's at. So I don't mean to throw stones. Totally. But there are things like that. I'm like, Ugh, this feels just like you said, like a creed. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's total. I mean, I, I love the flag. Like, I was raised with it. I think it's beautiful. I just, I get really pumped when the anthem starts. You and, got a beautiful anthem. And I totally know it's propaganda, you know? <laughs> and so I try not to fall into that. I, but everybody longs for some sort of real patrimony. Yeah. You know, like patriotism actually is some sort of a virtue. Yes. Nationalism is obviously condemned by the church, right. you know, so there's, you know, there's a proper distinction there. And I think that the mix between the two is the confuse <clears throat> the confusion between the two is the thing that, you know, gets, it's so hard to see. Yeah. They blur, is. don't they? Just like when we had Plato on and we were talking about the A-bomb being a catastrophe, a moral evil. Yeah. Um, it's hard for people because it seems to many Americans, okay, we have two camps, right? Mm -hmm. We have the leftist Biden agenda, yeah. or we have the like pro-capitalist in whatever sense of the word you're using that and um, uh, pro-America. And so any sort of critique against, you know, maybe maybe, maybe we shouldn't have like dropped bombs on innocent people or something <laughs> like, is, is seen as like a threat. Like I, I think, I feel like Americans already feel like their way of life mm -hmm. and their identity is under attack. Mm -hmm. So when there's, it's it, just like anybody, if you feel under attack, then any legitimate criticism is going to be unwanted. Yeah, I think there's a couple things about America that are just, like in our bloodstream that is just so good. It's not really uh, part of our founding. You know, it's maybe part of the revolution, but not so part of the founding. Anyways, the, the things that I'm thinking of are primarily like our love of freedom. Mm -hmm. And then also the natural subsidiarity that just always was here mm -hmm. um, prior to any legal documents being written, codified and signed. Um, and so, I, I mean, the freedom is th is just paramount. I mean, St. Paul says that for freedom, we've been freed. Mm. And freedom is is not something, I mean, St. Paul, St. John Paul II did, you know, a beautiful job of articulating it, that it's, you know, this freedom for, mm. not freedom from, is mm. the way that a Christian should be thinking about it. Like, we, we have freedom so that we might be able to do what we ought, right? And we kind of know this in in kind of the earlier stages of catechesis, and and that's really, like, beautiful. And, and I think it's something worth reflecting on is that our freedom is here, is a necessary condition for virtue. Um, it's not something that we just have as an axiomatic yeah. good. Um, yeah. it's, it's, you cannot have virtue if you don't have freedom because your choice for the good has to be uncoerced. Uh, it's, it not, yeah. it, you know, not habituated in the sense that we you know, use the term like, you know, with a Pavlovian bell yep. ringing or something like yeah. that, or I wake up in the morning and I kind of stumble to the bathroom and brush my teeth just because I've done it every morning of my life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it really has to be a conscientious choosing of, of what will bring me closer to God, see his face yep. more clearly and bring that intimacy. So it's a necessary condition for virtue, and that's why we praise it. And I think <clears throat> the um, the ability that, like, I think Americans do a, prime, like, I do a, superlative job actually of, of recognizing how good freedom is mm. maybe not necessarily knowing that it's for the good or, or for truth but but knowing that it is to be had and seeking after it uh, rather than kind of rolling over 
My mm-hmm. mentality certainly yeah. changed. I think in Australia, everyone sort of goes along to get along, and we're all sort of a kind of unit. Yeah. <clears throat> There's kind of one mainstream narrative, it seems. Mm-hmm. I think even to the point where protests, it was illegal. I, someone can fact check me on this, <laughs> Jamie. Uh, <laughs> but that, um, that it was illegal to film protests uh, against the vaccines and the lockdowns in Australia. Wow. I wonder if that's true. I've heard that. People say a lot of things about Australia to me these days. I'm yeah. Like, really? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's, there is something too, and I, I do want to back up a little bit on what I said, is that I think if we were a nation that was not just creedal, but, act, but actual in a certain way, like we had customs that yeah. bound us together uh, that were substantive, then we might start to be okay with some sort of like an overlord telling us what to do more because mm. we could see whether or not that what he was doing was you know within the custom yeah of our nation yeah, yeah. um but we just don't even have that and in for the common good and for the common good right yeah and so with an overreaching government i love the american tendency to be like just leave me alone right i love that yeah just, I'm, <laughs> i've so drunk the kool-aid yeah what well, is it is freeing and to be able to see that like the, the, the systems that we have set up, the, the ideas of sovereignty that we've articulated mm-hmm. are actually just legal fictions that in and of themselves are impotent in the face of reality. So it really takes all of us consenting to what they're saying and what they're doing for them to have real power. Mm. And I think this is, you know, goes along this, this idea of freedom that Americans have go along with the second thing mentioned of the subsidiarity, the natural subsidiarity. Um, where, where, you know, subsidiarity in and of itself just means that all power is oriented towards the nurturing of children. I mean, at the, at, in the baseline of it, my, people might say, well, it's towards like the lowest rung of the hierarchy or for the weakest. And that's true. I just think those are children. Um, <laughs> and, and it really, really comes down to, to that point of every, all of our responsibility, all of our growth and virtue is, you know, is to take is to you know, do as God did, deign to come down and, and to lift others up. And I and I think one element of seeing that clearly is just taking care of what's happening at the local level. Everybody trying mm-hmm. to uh, you know rally to to the cause of their neighbor. I think you know between televisions, computers, the phone, uh, you know our atomization has caused us to stumble in that kind of American. Mm-hmm characteristic uh, but i think it's still here and i think it's animatable again and, cool. I, and I hope in that so i mean I, just to fact check that i couldn't find anything about uh i think that's just right. a, a yeah urban okay good yeah. to know so yeah there, it's, it's funny a lot of people come up to me these days and they're like oh australia i'm like i don't know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> before we leave the topic just because i think of this every time we talk about like kind of patriotism every time you guys talk about patriotism on the show there's a book by walker percy called love in the ruins which is like right. and he's a catholic writer and it's like a post uh kind of satire post-apocalypse of mm-hmm. america and he has the uh the church fragment into um the kind of over traditional uh the the orthodox and then there on the other side there's a um like, like eastern orthodox and on the other side there's a the American Catholic right. Church and in they Kansas, per- persist. Isn't it? I think so. It's, it's centered in the Vatican moves to Kansas, or or you know they set up a new <laughs> Vatican in Kansas and they per- persist down the middle of the aisle with the American flag and sing oh. the anthem during Mass. Oh, well, we've God, pretty God much God done that. Dead. You know, I just think it's so weird when the American it's flag in the sanctuary. It's a real shame. I mean, we've just completely. Mm-hmm. I mean, Catholics. I mean, this is why New Polity exists, I suppose. But people really have no idea what this whole church and state yeah, thing is. Nah, you so. shouldn't be putting flags yeah. in sanctuaries. Yeah, Australian, American, or Nazi, Germany, or any flag. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.